Hey guys, there's a consistent set of mistakes that I saw from public land elk hunters over the years. They cost them big time, and most of them didn't even realize it. If you take the time and are diligent about avoiding these mistakes, it's my opinion that you will at least double your success rate on future hunts. If you have no clue who I am, my name's Cliff Gray. I built, owned, operated, and sold some of the largest wilderness businesses in North America. My insights and strategies in these videos are based on this data set and experience. I hope that they are useful to you guys. If you guys like my stuff, subscribe to the channel and get on my newsletter at PursuitWithCliff.com. Guys, again, I gotta reiterate it. I love all the comments you've been leaving on the videos. I read every single one of them, so if you got opinions or views, throw them down there and I'll read them. All right, so let's get to the point. The first common mistake public land hunters make is approaching an over-the-counter elk hunt with a single year approach. Hunting heavily pressured game animals is more akin to learning a martial art than it is signing up for an experience or vacation. So you gotta view it through that lens. I'm not casting any judgment here, guys. There are hunts in my life that I view as a vacation or an experience. You know, I'd love to go to Africa at some point. And my hope from that trip is that I will learn some broad information about a bunch of different species and be able to see many different animals that I've never experienced. I view that as a vacation. However, that mindset on an over-the-counter elk hunt won't work. The learning curve is steep, and this is a learning curve you are on for a while. Perhaps you're gonna be on that learning curve for a while even before you see or interact with elk. If you're looking for just a one-time experience, a vacation, and to dive into direct interaction with elk, book a ranch hunt. Even at seven to $10,000 a hunt, you're probably gonna end up saving money overall. Sometimes I think that people equate access to tags and opportunities, just psychologically, they equate that to a probability of success. It's like a salesperson saying, hey, to get six pack abs, you're going to need to work out for two hours a day, and then you're going to need to eat this selective diet every single day. And I mean every single day. But if you do that, I guarantee you will have a six pack. 80% of the people listening to that are going to forget everything before the butt part, right? They're just gonna remember the end part. And really guys, I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy here, but I think it's important because if you don't put these hunts in the proper lens, you're gonna get frustrated with them, okay? And that, that leads to you know less fulfillment in the hunt and less follow through on the hunts and in the end, less success. So my point is, it's about learning an art. It's not about signing up for, for a vacation when we're talking about out public land elk hunting. All right guys, the second big mistake is guys focusing on the wrong things when they're beginning to hunt, okay? They need to focus on high margin skill sets like woodsmanship, glassing, understanding the wind versus what I would call the lower margin skill sets, all right? These are, you know, picking the right camo pattern and then making the perfectly toned bugle, okay? There's some value in that, but they aren't the high margin uh, skills that we need to work on. So let's touch on those real quick. Woodsmanship. If you aren't comfortable in the field, you aren't going to succeed. You end up cutting hunts short, that sort of thing. The second one, glassing. You have to find the animals before you can kill one, okay? I'm not saying that during archery season you can't locate elk with calls, but I'm saying the marginal gain is there much more with glassing versus calling. Guys that are phenomenal callers are probably, you know, one to two X more effective than guys that are just out there in the archery woods with the hoochie mama. The, you know, the phenomenal callers are gonna call in three bulls. The guy with the hoochie mama is gonna call in one bull. But when you take guys that are phenomenal patient glassers, they are 10 to 20 X more effective than guys that glass out of a moving vehicle with $20 binoculars. For each one that those, those guys see, the phenomenal glasser is gonna see 20 to 30 game animals. So there's a huge marginal difference. Now on understanding the wind, new hunters understand that wildlife uses their eyes for defense. That's our primary defense as humans. You know, we're super sight dependent, but for elk, deer, and other mountain games, smell is like a second pair of eyes. We just don't realize that as humans. You have to view it that way so you can give it the right focus, okay? So you gotta understand how important the wind is. The last mistake I commonly saw from public land hunters is this constant worry and infatuation with the fact that there's other hunters around. I'll give you guys an anecdote here. As an outfitter, I generally ran the same amount of people each season in the different areas that we guided and outfitted in. The public pressure varied a little bit, 
you know, year to year, but it wasn't a huge fact. I pretty much dealt with the same amount of people over the same land mass year after year. When the hunting was poor, everybody bitched about all the hunting pressure around. Then when the hunting was good, I never heard a thing about it. So that just puts it in context, guys. It doesn't matter as much as you think. It's just your perception. Other hunters can mess up your hunting, but they can also help it too, particularly in rifle season. Think about this, with all the tools we have today, Onyx, Google Earth, you know, the ability for us to share information, it basically means that if there's no pressure around, there's probably no elk around either, okay guys? I've seen so many people throw in the towel because they're seeing other hunters. Just enjoy the hunt and focus on the elk. All right guys, I hope this stuff helps you guys on your pursuit for public land elk. If you want to get my thoughts on some of the things that highly successful public land hunters do do and things that they embrace, check out my video on the channel, Why 5% of the Hunters Kill 95% of the Elk. If you have anything to add from your own experience chasing public land elk, please leave it in a comment below. Like always guys, I really appreciate you watching the video. Thanks.